by Capital One. At the beginning of the season, these four teams were slotted in the top four of the preseason poll, and the fates have brought all four of them here tonight with a chance at a national title at the end of the weekend. Brown, please, privileged. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe. We're thrilled to have these two games for you tonight, and let's dive right in. There may not be a more elite front line in college basketball than what we're going to see from Baylor this evening. Yes, they have the formidable front line, which is the reason Kim Mulkey runs the offense she runs. They average 46 points in the paint per game, and they take advantage of their bigs inside. 6'4", Lauren Cox, 6'7", Kalani Brown. They love to run the high-low, and if Kalani Brown gets somebody isolated, one defender, she is going to score over them. But it's not just the high-low, it can be the low-high as well. There's players around her who can score. On this possession, she draws multiple defenders. She finds her post partner on the perimeter, Lauren Cox, scores there. These two are combining to average 30 points per game in the NCAA tournament. The two frontliners both voted to the All-American teams for this electric number one overall seed, the Baylor Lady Bears. They say styles make fights, though, and how about the contrast that we're going to see maybe the most electric individual player and one of the most high-powered offenses in the country in Oregon. Yeah, here's somebody that can throw some haymakers. That's for sure when you talk about Sabrina Ionescu. And she is somebody that's unlocked skill levels rarely seen in the co collegiate ranks. It starts with her intelligence. She's one to two steps ahead of every other player on the floor. Then it goes to her feel for the game. She's so patient and she allows for those windows to happen, for the moments to arrive. And the last part about Sabrina that I really enjoy is her competitiveness. She's an absolute lion on the court. If you're her opponent, you better be going in for the kill because you can be sure that Sabrina is going in for one on you. They're here for the first time. Baylor is back for the first time since a magical 40-0 season seven years ago, Holly. Well, that's right, and it's because of their talent. You may make an argument that Baylor is the most talented of all the four teams here. They've got All-Americans, and they've got seven McDonald's All-Americans, a very talented recruiting class. But Kim Mulkey told us, we do have talent, but when I asked her what makes this team special, the first thing she said, it's our chemistry. Wow, we're at another one. A lot of coaches coach a lifetime and never get here. This is what they dream of. We're just all for each other. And when we play like that, I feel like we could be the best, one of the best teams in the country. Like, there's no limit to what we could do. And we're going to keep playing like we've been playing. And now we have the goal of uh, winning this next game and then a national championship. We have talented players in that locker room. Great team chemistry. Let's go play ball. Oh my gosh, we did it. We finally are going to a Final Four, but we won more and we got it this year and we're not done yet. I mean, we knew what it was like to get to an Elite Eight. Of course, it's a blessing, but we wanted to get further than that. And so I think that fueled us. We were ready for that next game to get to a Final Four. I think when you have a talented team and they start to believe, you know, just magic happened. And, um, you know, and it's been a, an amazing ride since. Three Elite Eight trips in a row, but finally over the top and into the Final Four. It's time for the Capital One meet the players for the Oregon Ducks. Hi, I'm Adi Gilden from the University of Oregon. I'm a senior small forward and I'm a sneakerhead. Ruthie Hebert is a junior. She's a post player and she loves watching Netflix. Maite Cazorla is a senior guard and she loves playing Fortnite. Sabrina Ionescu is also a guard, and she loves to read. Erin Boley is a redshirt sophomore, and she loves drawing. Satu Sabli is a sophomore wing, and she does it all. She likes to read, draw, everything. So many offensive weapons for the Oregon Ducks. You have to play them way out on the floor because of their three-point attack. Ten threes a game. They're going to need to make a ton of threes if they want to beat Baylor tonight. Speaking of, the Baylor Lady Bears, their first Final Four since winning their second national championship back in 2012. It's time for the Capital One Meet the Players for Baylor. Hey, I'm Kalani Brown, senior from Baylor University, and I'm totally obsessed with everything Disney. Then there's Chloe Jackson, a fifth-year senior, who is very dramatic. We voted her the team drama queen. 
There's Dee Dee Richards, a sophomore. She loves to model, but she's extremely obsessed with herself. <laughs> then there's Juicy Landrum. They call her Juicy because when she was a baby, she was a fat baby. Finally, our Lauren Cox. We call her corporate because mostly everything she says goes. As much as we talk about the Baylor bigs, they're going to need some production from the perimeter as well. Juicy Landrum, their player who can make the three. She's made half of their threes so far in the NCAA tournament. Oregon Baylor, the 38th NCAA Women's Championship has led us to the Final Four. Off we go. Sabrina, Ines the controls. Sabrina Ionescu just sitting in the lap of Kalani Brown, leaving Dee Dee Richards open. She has played well the last two NCAA tournament games, looking for her shot and converting. There's Richards over Ionescu. <laughs> Satu Sabali on the drive, rims out. I like the aggressiveness though from Oregon. I think sometimes you can't get too scared and too nervous to drive into the paint against Baylor. You've got to have a steady diet of paint points and there's the size advantage of Kalani Brown on the interior. Big to big passing and we're going to see a lot of that with Baylor. Uh, they love to go high low, especially 6'4", Lauren Cox. Great vision to get it inside to her post partner. Offensive foul against Bully. You'll see it right here. The attention Kalani Brown is getting and again, the vision, when you have a tall post player looking into you, they know when you're open, they see when you're open, and they can deliver. Brown out on the perimeter now with Bowley guarding her. Chloe Jackson, the former LSU Tiger. And it's rebounded by Bowley, a former Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Ball in the hands of Sabrina Ionescu, the triple-double queen of college basketball with 18 in her career. Nice move by Satu Sabali. Yeah, look at that. The nice little up fake that kept the Baylor defender off balance, not able to go for the block shot. And I think Satu needs to be very aggressive tonight to help, really help balance out Oregon's three-point attack. And she's someone that's athletic enough and good enough to finish among the trees. Cox on the drive, moves right past Bowley. Last offensive possession for Oregon. We saw three on-ball screens and two handoffs. They are trying to exhaust that option on the offensive end, involving Brown and Cox in pick-and-roll situations. Kazorla finds Sabali and a foul. Lauren Cox late getting over. Well, you'll hear a lot about Sabrina Ionescu, and, I, and rightfully so. She's the Wade Trophy winner, but... This point guard from Spain, Maite Cazorla, she can pass. She's got great vision. She's excellent in ball screen action as well. That's why it works for Oregon, because they have multiple points of attack, multiple guards that can make you pay. Ginescu and Cazorla, one and two in Oregon history in assists. Kelly Graves telling us last year and this year, Maite Cazorla, the best guard in the country in the pick and roll. Offensive foul on Kalani Brown now. Both she and Cox have picked up an early foul. Ruthie Hebert guarding. Yeah, right up above the neck or with the elbow. And you see Ruthie Hebert knows that she's in for it. I mean, how about this in back-to-back -back NCAA tournament games? Tierra McCowan in the Elite Eight and then having to face man-to-man -man Kalani Brown. Well, a pick and roll with Ionescu and Hebert off target that time. It's a rare sight. Landrum a little off target. Oregon with its first lead of this opening quarter. Looking for help, and it's Cazorla. The defense by Jackson. Foley triggers. And here comes Chloe Jackson. 
What an addition she has been thrust into the point guard role for this high-powered offense. Speaking of high-powered, a little too much on the pass from Cox. Named AP National Coach of the Year, Kim Mulkey, a two-time champion. There are only eight coaches between men's and women's Division I basketball with three championships. Both Muffet McGraw and Kim Mulkey trying to join that exclusive club. Aaron Boley, a quick trigger three, gives Oregon the four-point lead. Pick and pop, pick and pop. That's what Kelly Grays was continually saying to Aaron Boley and Satu Sabali today. Cox knew it was short when she let it go. Sabali accelerating with defense by Lauren Cox, the two-time Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Richards had it knocked away by Sabali. She and Pizzorla get tied up, and the jump ball will send it to Oregon. So pace the last few times down the court definitely favors Oregon. I mean, Oregon is a team that, that wants to get up and down the floor. They feel like high pace, they're going to be able to, to get what they want, to be able to get open three-point looks. And Baylor not taking care of the basketball, three turnovers, the last three possessions. They got to get a hold of things and get into what they want to do, which is get the ball on the interior. We saw Kelly Graves, he was concerned about that. And we got a chance to talk with us this week. Inescu, a little floater over Cox. At what point in the game do you think Kara D.D. Richards will look to take that shot? Because right now she's not looking for it. If you're not confident in your shot, I think it has to feel really good. And when you say feel really good, she's wide open. Like You have to feel in rhythm. And that's something that Aaron Boley and the Oregon Ducks definitely feel right now. They feel like they're in a tremendous rhythm. You see Kim Mulkey frustrated with the officials, but she's also got to be frustrated with her defense. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Advil. You'll ask, what pain with Advil? The Oregon Ducks have attracted some attention of some pretty impressive ballers. What is that saying? Game respects game. Well, Kobe Bryant bringing in some nice kicks meeting up with the Oregon Ducks, and they've also attracted the attention of some other good players. LeBron James tweeting out that he liked the fire that they were bringing earlier this season, but perhaps the greatest compliment comes from Steph Curry. He has tweeted out that he loves Sabrina's game. He got his picture taken with her, and he said, can you please give me that video? I want it from my phone. He also shouted her out at a press conference. She's a legend in her own right for all the triple doubles. Very nice that those guys are respecting these young ladies' games. They've handled it very well over the course of the last couple of weeks, especially as the attention has grown. Another Baylor turnover, their fourth in the last seven trips. So where were they looking out of the timeout? To get Lauren Cox an opportunity to get a touch inside against a smaller bowlie, but still could not convert. The other thing that Baylor has done out of the timeout is go to their bigger lineup. So Melissa Smith, the freshman, has come into the game, and Kim trying to, to go with her supersized lineup to see if they can impose their will a little bit more from that three position as well. Good job by Cox here, getting the offensive foul drawn on Sabali. She can move her feet. I mean, I, I know she's got terrific length, but Lauren Cox has done a great job this year when called upon to, to guard on the perimeter. Well, you said it. Their big lineup is out there, and that's when Cox basically slides to the three. We got a lot of size out there, including Kalani Brown, who has her second bucket. See, that's what she needs to do, I think, is, is stay patient on the catch. Even if there's multiple defenders around her, they're all still smaller than her. Yeah. So it's either there's two defenders, but they're still both smaller than her. Take your time, she'll be able to finish. Melissa Smith, who is in off the bench, grabs that rebound. The true freshman out of Converse, Texas. And she has her first point to the final four. So we saw D.D. Richards reluctant to take that jumper when it was open. Now Melissa Smith, not a hesitation from the freshman. Hebert against Brown, and a traveling violation. So a, a nice little run here by Baylor out of the timeout. And you mentioned D.D. Richards out of the game, so that, that makes them, she's kind of come back in, that makes him a little less 
uh, potent defensively, but as you said, with Smith able to take that shot, I thought made them a little more balanced on the offensive end. The men's final four begins Saturday on CBS at 6 Eastern with Auburn, Virginia, then Texas Tech and Michigan State. For more info, go to NCAA.com. No hesitation right off the bench from Dee Richards that time. Well, when you get a chance to sit on the bench, this is your first <laughs> final four, and Coach talks to you, clearly told her to be aggressive and responded right away. You think she said it that way? <laughs> <laughs> there may have been some, uh, some more color in that language. Yanescu turns it over with Richards guarding, and then a foul committed by Sabali on the way up the floor is her second. Yeah, that's not smart by Satu Sabali because it's, it's so far from the basket, and there's really no need for it. Away from the play, turnover by Yonescu, and, and just get back. Get back on defense. This Oregon team knows they don't have a ton of depth. Foul trouble can be a problem, and so now they become... Uh, solid on the defensive end with Adi Gilding coming in, but certainly not as potent offensively with Satu Sable to the bench with two. And you saw how much of an X factor she is in the wins this year, about 17 and a half a game, less than 10 in the losses for Sable this year. For the Berlin native, the sophomore is on the bench. She is Oregon's second leading scorer. Inescu's free for three. Too strong. And they're playing way off Richards. Cox to Brown. No foul that time. Hebert was last to touch. Stayed strong defensively. Into Cox, forced it through Pizzorla and still scored. Baylor with an 8-0 run to answer. Richards nearly stole it. And Unescu went out of bounds. But she came back in. I think, she got both feet back in, I think, didn't she? I think Lisa Jones was saying she didn't reestablish her positioning back on the floor. She felt that she had. So out there... In there. No, she's clearly yeah. reestablished. Unless did the ball, the ball hit out of bounds? Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay. Gotcha. That's where I couldn't see if the ball hit she, the line. No. She was the last one to touch it. It was not a Unescu thing. It was the ball touching the line. Richards with a tough turnaround. Cox the offensive rebound. And this is what happens with Baylor. Oregon comes at you in waves, and it can happen quickly with a three-point attack. Baylor just wears you down. They wear you down with their size and their relentless approach on the glass. Nice drive by Pizzorla. Look at how low Ruthie Hebert is. Good ball movement as Brown found Richards on the back door, something that they see often when Brown gets doubled. A foul called against the Ducks on Ionescu. When Kalani Brown is posting up, Ruthie Hebert has been told to get as low as possible. That's what you try to do to put to get the advantage and push the defender out, and she is low. Check it out next time down the floor. Yeah, getting leverage. And one of the things about this Baylor team is they've seen pretty much the same version of defense every time they play. Right. Because people play off D.D. Richards. That's what they're used to seeing. And what she's done is she's found a way, she's found ways to, to use that against the defense to make timely cuts to get to get layups and there's an example of that right there getting herself to the free throw line and even the last possession when she missed the shot they got the offensive rebound she has to be thinking about scoring when she's on the floor right now she's defending Unescu in and out for Bowley Gilden nearly snatched it but out of bounds to Oregon the game plan for Oregon coming in is how do we take advantage of our size at the four spot and, and our ability to make threes and extend the defense? Well, it's a totally different ball game with Gildan in instead of Satu Sabli. So Hebert takes it upon herself to try to split the bigs. Ended up traveling. We said it's a contrast in styles. Oregon makes a bunch of threes right around 10 a game. Baylor likes to pound it inside. 
And Oregon's going to get some size in with Lydia Giomi, the redshirt sophomore from Seattle, for Hebert. So no longer use this possession to see how low Hebert is. Right. Low <laughs> save that, mean, save that in the box for a little later. <laughs> Another good cut by Richard, set it up. That was a productive minute or two on the bench for her when yeah. she was out of the game. <laughs> a little apprehensive, not as much in the second stint on the floor. Boy, Bowley's not shy. Rebound by Juicy Landrum. Intercepted by Cazorla. No one has played more games in a duck uniform. This is about as satisfying as it gets for the senior from Spain, Maite Cazorla, to see the construction of this program reach this apex. Foul called underneath against Giomi, her first. Kalani Brown did something smart there. Giomi was low and getting into her, so Kalani just kind of leaned on her to make it at least look like a foul, and she got the call. That's the fifth foul against the Ducks, so that sends Brown to the free throw line for two. Six foot seven senior from Slidell, Louisiana, and she learned the game from her mom. Dee was the main teacher of hoops for the young Kalani Brown. She was a 6'3 post player who was recruited by Kim Mulkey to Louisiana Tech and turned out a great career in her own right. Bowley's free. Quick trigger. Giomi to beat the buzzer. Denied inside and a four-point Baylor lead. For the first time, the Ducks are at the Final Four. They led 11-4 early. Kelly Graves saw Baylor close the quarter on a 15-4 run. Kelly is with Holly Rowe when you come back to Tampa. Welcome back to Tampa here with Oregon coach Kelly Graves. And what is your biggest concern that two of your leading scorers have not scored yet, Ruthie Hebert and Sabrina Unescu? Well, that doesn't bode very well for us. I mean, we're not going to win this game if those two don't get going. But uh, actually, I kind of like the way we started. And I like the fact Sabrina was kind of getting everybody involved early. But at some point, she's going to have to say, OK, I got I, I to gotta help run this show. And she will. That's who she is. You called Satu Sabali your X Factor. She's yeah. now on the bench with two fouls. How do you manage that through the first first half? Well, she's going to have to play with a little foul trouble. I, you know, we can't win this game without her. So, uh, uh, you know, she's just got to make sure she doesn't get some of those silly calls. And, and she's had a couple. So, uh, listen, to beat a great team like Baylor, you need everybody, all the Pistons firing, so to speak. And, uh, you know, we just kind of sputtered there a little bit. Good start, bad finish, but uh, 30 more minutes. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks. A little bit of feeling out process for Oregon's top two scorers. We heard Kelly Graves talk about it, and I think playing against Baylor is, is different. Even though Mississippi State had some length, you look at the size and the length of all of the positions. You see Ruthie Hebert hasn't been able to get a shot attempt up, a couple turnovers for her with the travels. I'm not worried about Sabrina Ionescu. She's going to figure out a way to score and figure out a way to impact this game. You were talking about Kalani Brown slowing down offensively on that end of the floor, and she did. Ruthie Hebert needs to do the same thing. You mentioned that she has three turnovers, mostly on travels. And Kelly Graves told us one of the goals for his team in this game, we have to have 10 turnovers or fewer. And he also said we need to make 12 threes and add a good percentage. Oregon, seven turnovers in the first quarter. They had 14 total the last two games combined. Her keys, 10 or fewer turnovers, and 12 or more threes. They went just two for eight from three in the first quarter. Landrum off target, and Giomi flies in for the rebound. No Hebert, no Sabali to start this second quarter for Oregon. Unescu. Richards hit the deck. Unescu missed the floater. Hilden on the glass, making an impact offensively. Well, you can see how hard Sabrina Unescu is having to work. And that's a credit to both D.D. Richards and Lauren Cox on that play. The high degree of difficulty shot. Jackson missed it.
Gilden trying to set the screen and Richards trying to punch through it. Uh, foul is called on Richards. Well, Thursday at 5 Eastern, the Frozen Four gets underway in Buffalo as Providence and Minnesota Duluth face off in the national semis on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. I just love watching Dee Dee Richards play defense because she, she's relentless and she understands that she's one of the major keys to her team in this game. Is Donescu makes a tough, tough shot. You see Dee Dee Richards grimace on her way up the court knowing that she gave her a quality look. Richards is kind of punched over at times after that physical play at the other end of the floor. Landrum gets it to drop down. Holly? Well, speaking of Dee Dee Richards' defense, she was in gymnastics as a kid, and her father, Damien, said he was so bored, he finally put her in basketball so he could enjoy taking her to practice. <laughs> so she didn't know how to dribble or anything, but she said, my dad had me doing defensive slides in the parking lot. That's how she learned to play the game, was on the defensive end first. And she says, I truly love it. A little frustrated there because she got caught behind the Giomi screen, and UNESCO gives Oregon the lead. I love that the dad was bored, so he made the daughter switch sports. <laughs> Here's Richards. It was a middle school growth spurt that got her involved in basketball. There is Pops seeing daughter knock down her third bucket. A growth spurt will limit your gymnastics career as well. <laughs> I wouldn't know about the growth spurt, Rebecca. Inescu finds Cazorla. That may have been impacted by Jackson's defense. Jackson setting it up, finding Cox, who had that slip off her hand, missed the layup, but draws the foul. Cox to the free throw line. Well, they'll play behind those screens a lot. Uh, Dee Dee Richards gets caught underneath instead of going over on Sabrina, and she'll make you pay with that. I mean, it, it's hard, the screens and the re-screens, to keep up with Sabrina Ionescu. There's her father, Dan, big supporter at most of her games. A great story. Sabrina, the daughter of Romanian immigrants. Dan actually fled Romania around the time of the 1989 revolution, set up shop in America, and it was several years before the rest of the family could make the trip over from Romania. Sabrina and her twin brother, Eddie, were born in the United States in 1997, eight years after Dan made it to America. Ellen thrown away by Sabali, who's back on the floor with the two fouls. There is Eddie on the left, the twin brother of Sabrina Ionescu, 18 minutes younger than quote-unquote big sister. But those two learned how to play ball with one another. They used to hustle people in parks for Slurpee money together, and when they couldn't communicate in English, they'd communicate in Romanian together. With Dan and Eddie watching Sabrina in action tonight at the Final Four. Wave out the basket, three-second violation against Baylor, and the Ducks have it back. That can happen when big players feel like they have position or feel like they have a mismatch, and Kalani Brown that time was in for three-plus seconds. Ebert and Sabali are both out there, as is Morgan Yeager, who's had to play key minutes with some injuries late in the season. Hebert denied by Kalani Brown. Sabali finds Jaeger. How about it? Like a Tiger Woods putt, it ties the game at 24. Cox squeezing through two defenders. Brown somehow snatches the offensive rebound and draws a foul. Whew. Brown doing it at both ends. Ruthie Hebert going inside and she simply doesn't have the size and Kalani Brown throws it down. I was wondering if this one was just going to stop up there. 
Aussie, we, Aussie, Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on this end of the floor, Oregon is sending the double team to the big from the other big. And that's how Kalani Brown was able to get to the offensive glass. It was her player that came down to double on Lauren Cox. Well, Oregon's already had to go deeper in their bench early, earlier in the game than we're used to. And with the number of fouls being called on them, I'm a little concerned about the long game because this is not a deep roster. Only eight players dressed tonight, only eight players healthy to play in this game. And they can't afford foul trouble from some of their key pieces. Baylor is the only team out of the four in the final four that have a relatively deep bench. Good rebound by Richards. Baylor's defense has already forced eight duck turnovers. Baylor, as they have most of the year, has dominated the paint. Excellent defense there, though, by Ruthie Hebert. Tough assignments in back-to-back -back games. Yanescu blocked by Lauren Cox. The Big 12's block leader. Landrum off the glass and good. Oh, this is the second time that Juicy Landrum's been run up to off the three-point line because she's their one true three-point threat. And she's done a nice job to put the ball in the deck a couple times and make the two-point shot. Pizzorla. Offensive rebound by Heber. May have been blocked by Smith. Shot clock down to seven. Landrum to Richards. And Landrum was on the baseline when she caught the ball. Lauren Cox, the two-time Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, denying one of the top players in the country. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Golden Corral, featuring endless sirloin and seafood. Coming up at the half, the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report with Maria Taylor, Andy Landers, Nell Forner, and my man Darius taking care of the set as well. First half breakdown and the softer side of the now grandmother Kim Mulkey, the two-time national champion head coach of the Baylor Lady Bears. We currently lead this one by three past the halfway point of the second quarter. Story of the score, Baylor dominating the paint. Ionescu, no points in the first quarter, five here in the second. And the Bigs getting it done for Baylor. Sabali is out there. Has to rescue that ball. She and Smith go down to the deck. And it's going to be a foul on Nalissa Smith. Yeah, great hustle. Great hustle. I mean, Smith and Sabali going after it. Care. We saw Alyssa Smith early in the season when his Baylor team played Arizona State out on the Navajo Reservation, and we were really impressed with her there. And for her minutes that she's gotten so far in this game, they've been limited, but they've been impactful. Preseason Big 12 co-freshman of the year goes to the bench. You know, the, the thing about Smith that, that I've enjoyed from day one was she doesn't play nervous or scared. She goes out there and, and like you said, impactful and tries to make something happen. How hard is that, too? Because this is the first Final Four appearance for everybody on the floor on both of these rosters right now. Yonescu tried to slip it to Hebert. Late in the clock. Yonescu for three. Battle for the board goes to Brown. I love the way Gilden, though, has been attacking the offensive glass every possession. Brown with the cut, Cox with the pass and the assist. Baylor ties its largest lead at five. And that's the gamble you take when you double team a big from the other big, when as soon as the one on the low post catches it, when you're high, you dot. Yeah. 
Ionescu again for three, and this time it goes. You know, Oregon's never far out of it because of their three-point shooting. I mean, Baylor can score a couple buckets, and in, in, in one quick flick of the wrist by Ionescu, they can make it back to a one-possession game. Cox thought about it, knocked it down. She can step out and shoot it. Bowley's in the corner. And she's got her third three of the game. Uh, nice little hammer action there by Oregon. Uh, catching Baylor unaware. Driving the baseline, Maite Kazorla. Hebert setting the screen and Bowley getting a clean look from the corner. I know you like that hammer, Adam. Especially when, I, especially when I can sit there and listen to you actually break it down for me. Yes. We all love the hammer action there. I didn't know that you were a fan. You're always, set, you're always having to set the screen. You're not getting the three-point shot. That and floppy, we can't get enough. Floppy, floppy. Lobo's a proud screen setter, though. You've established your love of setting screens. Ionescu was bumped. She wanted a foul call. Quick dump down to Brown for two. Double figures in the first half for Kalani Brown, the senior. Boy, Richard's doing everything to try to stay with Ionescu. Cox with another block, this time on Gildan. Brown across the paint. Too strong. Shot clock is up. One shot, says Kelly Graves to his leader, Sabrina Ionescu. She gets free. Hit by Richards and a chance at a four-point play. You know, some players make shots like this that can be momentum changing and run back down the other end. And some let you know they just did it. And Sabrina Ionescu is one to let you know, hey, I just made that. She's going to give Didi Richard a nice little stare down. The swagger of Sabrina in full effect on that play. After a scoreless opening quarter, she's put together a dozen in the second to give Oregon the lead. Final seconds. Cox just rims out, and it's a one-point Oregon advantage as we hit the halftime break. Five ties, five lead changes, a back and forth opening 20 minutes between the first-time Final Four participant Oregon and the two-time champion Baylor Lady Bears. Let's go over to Holly Rowe with Sabrina Ionescu. Sabrina, it took you some time to get going. What was going through your mind that finally allowed you to get some shots off? I mean, I was just letting the game come to me. They were aggressive. This is our first Final Four, so I was just letting my teammates get shots. What's been hard about scoring inside and trying to navigate against these bigs? I mean, they have two of the best post players in the country, so we just got to keep punching gaps, keep penetrating and kicking, and keep taking it to them. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you. Ionescu got going, so did the Ducks in the second. A one-point lead for Oregon. It's time for the halftime report. Maria Taylor and company, take it, friend. For the human race, there is no escaping emotions. The trick is to control them when the pressure is on. That is what separates the good from the great. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. The slimmest of margins separates Oregon and Baylor as we get set for the start of the third quarter here in Tampa. 
Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe in a moment as well. Ducks trailed after one quarter, had a surge in the second behind Sabrina. Of course. I mean, most of what Oregon does offensively revolves around their All-American, Sabrina Ionescu. And as we take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance, it's about the ball screen action and Sabrina Ionescu navig navigating against that in the first half. Does an excellent job of getting to the paint, drawing an extra defender, driving kick with Aaron Boley, who's a knockdown three-point shooter, creating opportunities for her teammates in that first quarter. But in the second quarter, starting to get hot, starting to get warm a little bit, Dee Dee Richards makes the cardinal sin of going under the screen, and Sabrina Ionescu makes her pay. We started this game talking about the contrast in styles, and Baylor delivered in that first half 20 points in the paint. But for Oregon, it was all about their one big inside surrounded by four three-point shooters. Their starters only played less than seven minutes together in that first half because of foul trouble. Can't play that style if those players that play that style aren't out there. That's exactly right. Richard slipping through to put Baylor in front. Baylor's back in front. That's where they've been most of this tournament. They trailed for a total of two minutes the entire first four games. Now they're trailing again after a Satu Sabali three. And that's the importance of having all five starters on the floor. Adi Gildan doesn't shoot or make threes. Satu Sabali, she does. <laughs> Cox puts it in. Her running mate Kalani Brown was with Holly Rowe at halftime. Well, Kalani, I would imagine Kim Mulkey has a list of things for you guys to correct in the locker room at halftime. What were they? Uh, you know, we have to rebound on the backside. We let some uh, chippies get away. Uh, you know, she said the guards are working on the perimeter, so we felt it's our job to rebound so we can get out and run in transition. For you, you really started to take over a little bit towards the middle part of that quarter there. How can you be more effective inside? Uh, she said the last two and a half minutes were the best, so uh, she said I played that that whole quarter. Um, I just got to find a way to run and get in the middle of the paint and disrupt a little bit. Thank you so much. Kalani Brown with double figures in the first half. Sabrina Ionescu now has 15. And she gives Oregon the three-point lead. And here she comes. The crowd wanted a push-off with Richards hitting the deck. Ionescu got her own miss. An excellent rebounder who's had 18 triple-doubles in her career. The most for any Division I player, male or female, in the history of the sport. Six more than anybody else. Yeah, right heel on the sideline. Bowley didn't, wasn't as aware of where she was. And when you have deep range, you have to be careful along, along the sideline and close to the corners where that three-point line edges out. An unfortunate turnover there for Oregon. I know exactly what you're talking about when you have that deep range. <laughs> What was the career three-point percentage? Just out of curiosity. Oh, no. Kalani Brown's got some range. All the way out for a long two, and she's got a dozen. Boy, she just screamed twice in the direction of Maite Cazorla. Trying to get her defense locked in. Brown cut off that pass. She was last to touch. Ionescu, rebounded by Brown. Contact inside, foul called on Boley, her second. Sabrina Ionescu coming down, hitting the shot. We saw her, the stank eye in the first half when she made the three. Look at her, she's staring right at Dee Richards, the scowl <laughs> and the stank eye, the two for one. Uh, the classic combination of Scout and Stank Eye. <laughs> there is an intensity level, though, to Sabrina Ionescu that is, I think, elevated above a lot of other college players. Yeah, she's competitive. I mean, she's one of the most competitive players I've ever be been around. And, and I don't say that lightly. I mean, I had the opportunity to spend two weeks with her last summer. And, Adam, every single drill, every single day, she's competitive. And she's like that. She talks trash. She has this great confidence in what she can do. And she has the ability to, to, to have that ooze over to the rest of her teammates and have them play more confidently than they are.
Jackson, tough step back. In and out. Offensive rebound, Kalani Brown. Three-time All-American, Kalani Brown with 14 points now. Richards trying to fly out on Ionescu. Baylor off to a good shooting start in the third. Five for seven from the floor. A deep one from Juicy Landrum, their best three-point shooter. Offensive rebound again, and this time it's the other big. Cox with the putback, and a timeout from Kelly Graves. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by the Volkswagen Atlas with third row seating. For a record 12th consecutive season, the UConn Huskies have made it to the Final Four, but each of the last two seasons, they've been eliminated in the semifinals on buzzer-beating shots in overtime, the most recent of which off the fingertips of Arike Ogumbawale a season ago. What do we have in store for you when meeting number 50 between Notre Dame and UConn takes place after we're done with a fire one in number one, Oregon and Baylor? UConn and Notre Dame met back in December. Double-digit victory for the Huskies. Maite Cazorla with a nice take. And she cuts the lead down to three. See how often UConn and Notre Dame have squared off. We'll get to do it again in a bit. Dominating the paint and the running game so far. And Jackson now getting into it offensively. Her first points of the night. Well, that could be a separation piece for Baylor offensively. If Richard starts to hit the jump shot, if Jackson starts to hit the jump shot, and you add that to that dominance in the paint that, paint that you spoke of. Rebecca, Oregon has had to work so hard at both ends of the floor to make something happen. Uh, and, and especially at the defensive end of the floor where, where they're doing their best against the bigs. I mean, that's going to take something out of you. That's going to take something out of you, and, and I'm interested to see if Ruthie Hebert can get anything going offensively here. Still hasn't scored. Until now! A chance at a three-point play when you come back. Twelve consecutive Final Fours for the UConn Huskies as they await a rematch with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And tonight, there's plenty of ways to watch our Final Four coverage. Below the rim with some great angles. Beyond the rim with enhanced stats along with our spider cam. And I think you're going to want to check out Championship Talks. We've stacked goats on goats. We've got Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird. What do you guys got for us tonight? on Instagram, who wore it best? You or Kim? Still in the running, still in the running. But well, we do have a, a very uh, interesting game here so far. Three-point lead for Baylor. Finally, Ruthie is getting involved in the offense. But what yeah. do you think about Sabrina? Tell me what you think about Sabrina. Well, I mean, Sabrina, no matter what, is, is key to what Oregon does. Right. Uh, I mean, you felt it in the first half. When she's making shots, she's making plays. That team is playing high octane and, and is unstoppable. And, you know, in, in, in this quarter, they've done such a good job of bringing so many players to her when, when she's coming off that pick and roll and they're long and they're making her right. they're taking away that first option the second one you see her getting stuck in that lane and, and kind of doesn't have anywhere to go I mean that's tough and you know if they can keep doing that it's only going to help Baylor so I don't know if you know this but a lot of people have been comparing hmm. Sabrina not necessarily her style of play but right. her kind of like her swagger cockiness to you mm -hmm. what well, do you think you know it, it's it's nice to see a player that has some great that has that competitive fire. And I've watched her play a lot now for the last couple of years. And um, it's nice to see that. You know, I think a lot of times players are a little bit too reserved on the court. Um, I don't think she is at all. But at the same time, she's very controlled. So she's a lot different than me too. 
<laughs> great, great way to end. Great way to end that interview. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. You can check out Championship Talk with Sue and D on the ESPN app right now. Baylor by three, four minutes to go, third quarter. Late in the clock, here's Cox. Trying to force one up, good defense by Sabali. Bucks have turned it over 11 times in this game, already beyond their season average. Bowley for three. Hebert offensive rebound. Much more active Ruthie Hebert here in the last few minutes. Oregon needs that. The other player I think needs to continue to probe is Sabali. Because mm -hmm. Sabali is athletic enough to get by her defender or she's going to have the size advantage. She needs to look to continue to attack. Well, Rebecca, you said you need the starting five out there to play that style. They're out there right now together. Yanescu. Last touch by Cox. It will stay with a fresh shot clock for the Ducks. Yeah, getting to the paint is really important for Oregon's drive and kick game in their three-point opportunity. So if you're just set, Baylor has the length and the athleticism to take away the three-point shot. Now you penetrate the defense, you draw help, and you're going to get easier shooting windows for your shooter. And with a starting lineup, you have three shooters on the floor when that player makes the drive. Just what you're talking about, Kara. Second three of the quarter for Satu Sabali ties the game at 47. So Baylor going to go with a little bit of an overload here against that Oregon zone. See if they can get a clean look, and they do. Jackson hits that shot. Uh, I mean, I, I think the money is made for Baylor in the paint. We know that. It, it's, it, it's what has to be the core piece of their offense. I think for them to win a national championship, they've got to make some outside jump shots from some of those players that you slough off of, whether it's Jackson or Richards. And if you're talking mid-range game, yeah. Chloe Jackson is as good as they come. An excellent two guard in her entire career placed into the point guard role this year. Sabali trying to draw the foul and does from Cox. Three free throws coming. And Kim Mulkey couldn't believe the call from Cheryl Flores. Sunday at 5 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. NCAA Women's Championship special coming up. Sabley did a nice little job there. You know, as soon as she felt a little bit of contact on her hand, she went down, so the officials had to make the call. I know, Carrie, you like when they protect the shooters? Have to protect the shooters, <laughs> especially, land, you know, landing. And it might seem like there's not a lot of contact, but... It is dangerous to land if you could potentially roll your ankle or potentially get hurt even worse. So I'm, I, I am a fan of protecting the shooter's landing territory. I've seen injuries before off of that. Look at Cox that. with a beautiful tip to Brown. So does she get an offensive rebound and assist on I that play? So. She should. Yep. That was a very heads-up play by Cox, who averages better than three assists a game. He's got seven tonight. Yanescu, the floater, and a foul. <laughs> Dan is pumped up. Sabrina's father. Now, this is as good as it gets, because I think Dee Dee Richards plays pretty good defense here until the end when there's a little bit of contact. And that's her third foul, so a costly one from Baylor and that it gives Oregon an, an extra opportunity for a point and puts Dee Dee Richards maybe having to come out of the game. Now, Nalissa Smith is coming on the floor, and indeed, Richards is going to have to come off. A big minutes for Nalissa Smith, the true freshman. Brown in traffic draws the contact. You know, honestly, against his own. It, it, that's what I would do every time. I mean, put Lauren Cox in the free throw line area and put it right down the lane to Kalani Brown. 
And even if help comes over, it's not enough. If she takes her time, if she gathers herself, she's still going to get a clean line of vision to the rim. And the player that helped that time was the player who picked up the foul. That's three on Sabalu. Plenty Brown is a load, and I say that in the most positive way. Yeah. And she just steps in front of the defender, and she's bigger and stronger and wider. And if she makes the catch, as you said, it doesn't matter who comes over. She's going to get a clean shot. She grew up watching Baylor basketball from Louisiana, looked up to Brittany Griner. No surprise that she is up there in the record books with her name alongside Brittany Griner after a fantastic four-year career. Tied at 52. Kazorla to Bully for three. Kara, talk to me about dribble penetration, paint touch, out for a three. Hammers it home. <laughs> <laughs> Denied by Hebert, out of bounds to Baylor. Well, defender slips, and so that gives Kazorla free reign along the baseline. Help has to come, and look at Hebert looking to clean it up. Gets a little screen on Cox. That's 10 threes. What did Kelly Graves say to us? He said, I'll feel really good if we get 12 threes in this game. I'll feel like that will be really hard for Baylor to match us. Kalani Brown doing a good job of keeping Baylor attached. 19 on 11 shots for Brown. Seen a lot of screen, re-screen, screen, re-screen to make those Baylor defenders work. We got fully a free look that time. Jackson on the run. There's not much difference between shot clock and game clock, so Baylor can hold to try to take the lead at the end of the third quarter in what's been a back and forth slugfest so far. Oregon tried to take a foul there, I think. And Jackson got a good look. Cox with the putback. Baylor takes the lead. Ionescu, it'll count if it goes, off the front rim. Ten ties, ten lead changes, a barn burner in Tampa in our first semifinal. And the two-time champion, Kim Mulkey, back at the Final Four for the first time in seven years. She's with Holly Rowe on the other side in Tampa. What a game. In the hearts of warriors, Hope sometimes hides, but is never lost. Welcome back to Tampa, here with Baylor head coach Kim Mulkey. And coach, how can you do a better job defensively on the three-point line? <laughs> you know how hard that is to guard? Good Lord, Holly, we're fighting, clawing. That's hard to guard, okay? And um, we're doing best we can. What can you change there? Well, I go to a zone, take a chance, and uh, they hit a three. I'm not a zone coach, but, you know, they went to a zone. Maybe I need to do that. But, listen, we're hanging in there. And quickly, Dee Dee on the bench with three fouls. How long can you leave her there? Well, she's coming back now. I just needed to get her off that last minute and a half so she didn't pick up her fourth. Thank you, Coach. You betcha. Kim Mulkey has won as a player. She's won as an assistant. She's won as a head coach. When she first walked into the building this week in Tampa, the first thing she did when she walked in was tell her team, you see that banner? She patted her chest and said, that's all me right there. <laughs> Plenty of titles, but a lot of worries right now with what Oregon's doing to Baylor. The styles make matches concept has rang true through three. We got a one-point game in Tampa. Richards and one. Again, patience paying dividends for Baylor when there's a double team or when there's a scramble. Double team goes to Lauren Cox. She finds Kalani Brown quickly. Watch the cut from D.D. Richards on time. Takes the contact and finishes. That's what Baylor needs to do on the offensive end, and they draw Satu Sabalit's fourth foul of the game. That's huge now at the start of the fourth quarter to not have her versatility on the offensive end. We saw what happened when she went to the bench in the first half with foul trouble to this Oregon offense. That's where a young player has to learn to be smarter. Don't go anywhere near it. Do not pick up your fourth in this situation. Okay, I like this. Little extension of pressure. Try to waste a little time on the shot clock. They screen Richards, who fights to get back on Ionescu and commits the foul. That's now four on Richards as well. 
a key defensive piece. And how about Richards, who has 15 points as well? So now that's four fouls against her to the bench. She might have to go. We'll see. It looks like Kim Mulkey is going to trust oh, her sophomore. She switched her off, Yonesk. Yeah. Okay, so on the bully, who's not going to penetrate, is going to be more of a catch and shoot. So not really in harm's way to get to get as, fa as many fouls as you are defending Yonesku. So they threw Juicy Landrum on her there and a turnover. So you can keep her in the game, but you know she's she's not going to, to be in the mix as much to, to pick up that fifth. Terrible pass. Bad pass by Jackson. Usually she's better on those entry feeds. Gildan is out there with Sabali on the bench with four fouls. Seven to shoot. Bowley for three. What an offensive rebound by Adi Gildan. We talked in the first half about how she was relentlessly pursuing the ball every time the floor down the floor offensively. Great job by Gildan. She's played in the second most games in Oregon history right behind Maite Cazorla. Brown against Hebert. And a whistle. Wave out the basket. A foul called against Hebert. Well, Sunday at 5 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Join us for the NCAA Women's Championship Special presented by Capital One. And we'll have the National Championship game. You can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. So Richards with the four fouls will now get a spell on the bench. They bring in Moon Urson. And they get an easy look underneath with Landrum. Uh, Yonescu just fell asleep. Yep. She fell asleep on the weak side. That was a great cut from Juicy Landrum, catching her unaware and gets the layup. Yonescu and Hebert running that pick and roll. Uh, there's shake action on the open side. Uh, they run that pick and roll. You have to honor Yonescu coming off the screen. So what does that do? That leaves Hebert rolling to the basket free. Hebert has really responded in this half after a very slow first 20 minutes. It's Boley guarding Cox down low. And the foul called on Boley is her third. Melissa Smith's going to check it. <laughs> Trying to figure out who's going to come out, and it will be Moon Urson. Winterson, what did I do? I was in for like 30 seconds. What did I do? Jackson off the cock screen. Hebert with the rebound. A nice box out by Gildan because Melissa Smith was charging hard now here's the open side again these two gonna play together rescreen and Boley gets a good look from the elbow we're tied at 61 Smith, the turnaround over Gildan. Boy, Yonescu beat Brown for the rebound. Finds Bowley. Transition three. That slipped out of her hands as, she, as soon as she released it. That one forced in by Landrum. Picked off by Bowley. Oregon Ducks, first time in the final four. Pazorla looking for the lead. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by the magic of Walt Disney World Resort Hotels.
we haven't gone on one of those runs where we put together two or three threes in a row. Okay? And once we do, you guys will take off, guaranteed. Well, the Google Cloud highlights feature a 7-0 duck run with a couple of big threes. That's what this team does. 11 made threes tonight. You see the final floor record at 13. Aaron Boley, Sabrina Unescu. The last one before the break was Maite Cazorla. They have so many weapons and so many players that can beat you from the outside. That, has, that is the reason why they're in the lead, and that is the reason why they have a chance to get to the national championship because of their prowess from beyond the arc. Brown finds Cox out of the timeout and scores. Holly, what did you learn in that Baylor huddle? Kim Mulkey is furious at her defense. She said, our defense is why they're back in this game. It's not Sabrina that's beating us right now. It's your two defense on Aaron Boley. She pointed at Warren Cox and Juicy Landrum. Everybody's got to pick it up, but those two specifically from that three-point line. Tough shot by Ionescu. Good defense that time by Landrum. Baylor trails by one. The number one overall seed. They've done it with a player who had never played point guard in college until this year. The grad transfer, Chloe Jackson. Late in the clock. Brown. Offensive foul as Hebert takes the elbow. Hebert does a good job playing position defense. Moves her feet, isn't afraid to get her face in the way, and takes an elbow and a shoulder as a result. That's the anticipation that defensively. Uh, no, knowing that Kalani Brown was going to spin back to the baseline, being there. There's Enrique Ogumbawale, the hero of last year's Final Four, getting set for Notre Dame as they'll face UConn. Richards all over Boley and she's got the strip. Trying to control it on the run out. Loose ball to Jackson. Knocked away by Hebert this time. And Ionescu comes to the ball. Smart play by Ruthie Hebert. Ionescu. To Cazorla. Eight to shoot. Yanescu for three. In and out. And run down by Landrum. Approaching four to play in quarter four. His whole game has been played in a 12 point window. Here's Brown, pops it and banks it in, uh -oh. and Baylor's in front. How about that play yeah. by Kalani Brown? That's not an easy shot to make straight on bank. 21 for Kalani Brown in her final four debut. In the hands of Ionescu, as it so often is, against Cox. The kick to Gildan for the lead. And a great rebound by Landrum. Approaching three minutes to go. Satu Sabli has been at the scorer's table for a while now, waiting for a stoppage so she can come back in the game. Been dealing with foul trouble in this game. Tried to throw it to Brown and Hebert with the seal on defense. And Kelly Graves will use a timeout here. First of two semifinals. And it's been a tight one throughout. Two-time champion Baylor and the first time Final Four participant, the Oregon Ducks. Kelly Graves, an outstanding coaching job at Gonzaga comes to take over an Oregon program that had very little buzz around it, very little prior success relative to other elite level programs, and every single year they've taken another step and another step, and here they are for the first time. How have they gotten here, Kara? It's been a slow build, but how they've gotten here was getting Sabrina Ionescu. Now that changed the program. In her freshman year, they struggled in Pac-12 play, but they were able to upset Duke. 
in Cameron Indoor Stadium. They were able to upset Maryland in the Sweet 16, and they got a taste of playing UConn in that Elite Eight. As a young team, I think that helped helped them grow and that helped put their expectations at a higher level when they came in as sophomores and now the junior class leading the team to a final four. Here is Ionescu. Blocked by Landrum. Excellent defense. Scramble for the ball. Cheryl Flores, it will stay here with 11 on the shot clock. Well, tonight after Blazers Nuggets and after the buzz over on ESPN, SVP on Sports Center, Jay Billis talks about the men's Final Four. Carol Lawson will break down the women's Final Four. Doris Burke breaks down NBA. Smart people talking hoops coming up on Sports Center with SVP. Sabali back in the game, and Lauren Cox with another denial. Five seconds on the shot clock. You've got to be aware. Uh, multiple weapons for Oregon. Into Ionescu. A good look. Rims out. 220 remains. Here's Cox. On the drive. Puts it in. Baylor leads by three. How about that? I mean, 6-5, the ability to, to blow by Aaron Boley on the offensive end and extend this lead. Have to guard the three-point line if you're Baylor. Ionescu's open for three. Rebounded by Sabali. Trying to break the scoreless drought, and she does to tie the game. What a game. 12 ties, 12 lead changes. 80 seconds to go in our first semi. Richards left it short. Cazorla's got the rebound. And it's just going to be Hebert and Ionescu. Ionescu to the rim, rebounded by Brown. 50 seconds to go in a tie game. I wonder if Baylor's going to go two for one here. They're running it down. Jackson on the drive, gets free for the lead. A clutch bucket from the first grad transfer to play for Baylor. Ionescu to Sabali, steps in to tie the game. Rebounded by Brown, the shot clock is off. Oregon's got a foul now. That was the last foul to give for the Ducks. Chloe Jackson just getting the screen and off to the races. Now Boley and Cazorla get mixed up and she gets a wide open layup. No more fouls to give for Oregon. It gets into Cox and Boley commits the foul, her fourth, and that will send a 74% career free throw shooter to the line. You know, Baylor hadn't done a good job of running Oregon off the three point line for most of the game. But on that last possession, Lauren Cox ran Sabali off the line, taking away a sure open three and making her take a two. And that was the difference in that possession. Now, she could have made it and tied the game, but the fact that she ran her off the line, Baylor finally got the defense they needed on the three-point line to run them off it. Big free throw here to try to make it a two-possession game. A lot of time left. Remember in women's college basketball, we have the timeout advance. And so there's going to be a lot of time for Oregon to draw plays. And certainly with the plethora of three-point shooters on their roster, the Ducks aren't out of this one. What a moment for Lauren Cox in her first Final Four. In Oregon's shoot-around this morning, they went through a variety of sideline out-of-bounds plays, probably five or six different sets. The commonality in all of them 
was that it ended with a Sabrina Ionescu three. And in this moment, she's the player that you would anticipate will get the basketball because she has been so big for them down the stretch. Ionescu hit a big three against Mississippi State in the Elite Eight, and then the dagger came on an assist to Cazorla. They're going to need a quick bucket here. Baylor in front 5-4. Yeah, I don't know that you're married to a three-point shot in this instance with a lot of time left and still with another timeout to advance. You could put some pressure and make Baylor uh, make two, two free throws again, but certainly if you get a clean look at it, you, you, you let it fly. And Baylor does have two fouls to give right now as well if they wish to use them. Into Cazorla. Out to Ionescu. And a foul called. That's a foul to give by Landrum. A smart play. Nice job, okay? Because a lot of times on the foul to give, teams will foul right away. And it's in the first second. Or they, they took five seconds off of the clock, okay? And this is shortening the game for Baylor. Look to do it again. Just don't do it with someone in a shooting motion. Ionescu tried to draw the foul. Missed it. Hebert. Out to Saboli for three. They need it. No good. Brown the rebound, and she's fouled with 3.4 to go. I thought Yonescu got fouled going over the screen. I thought she got a hand across her face as she went to shoot it. Okay, watch Juicy Landrum's left, left hand right across the face. Okay, now that would have been a foul to give. I don't think Sabrina was in her shooting motion, but I think it should have been called a foul. Clearly a missed yeah. call by the officials in an otherwise very well officiated game. Right. Foley committed the foul. It was her fifth. She fouls out. Kalani Brown's mom, D looks on. A great player when Kim Mulkey recruited her to Louisiana Tech. And now the daughter has a chance to maybe ice a spot in the finals. You know, we talked about a lot about the margin of victory for Baylor in this NCAA tournament, okay? Almost 25 points per game. They hadn't had a close, a close margin. They hadn't had a game like this where it was a possession-by-possession possession game down the stretch. They've handled the pressure, they've handled it well, and they've been able to execute. Just one blemish on a remarkable season. Just that one loss to Stanford. Baylor ran through the Big 12 once again, and they've taken on all comers. Over at Baylor Ballpark, they're watching free throws go down, and they're ready to celebrate a spot in the championship, something that they accomplished in their last trip to the Final Four seven years ago during a magical 40-0 Brittany Griner-led campaign to their second title. They're 3.4 away from a spot in the championship game. As a post player, it's nice to see that old school bang the ball inside to the big guy still works. And they have combined wow. for a spectacular 43 tonight in very efficient fashion. Carrie, you talked about their one loss on the season, and they said it's rare that we both don't play well on the same night. And against Stanford, they did not play well on that night. They were held to a season low seven combined points, Cox and Brown, that night. And since then, 27 consecutive wins, the longest active streak in the country. Led by those two at 6-7 and 6-4. And they both talked about the closed door meeting they were called into in Kim Mulkey's office after that loss, talking to them about their leadership and the accountability of being upperclassmen on this team. They've responded. The Baylor Lady Bears are headed back to the championship. Kim Mulkey told us when we asked her, why has this been such an emotional run for you? It's because she wanted it for Cox and Brown. Delivering some words of wisdom to the electric Sabrina Ionescu. 
That's a, a nice moment there. Yeah, that's that's real recognizing real. Kim Mulkey's a real one. Sabrina Ionescu is a real one as well. And certainly, what a performance by Baylor. I mean, their bigs, their patience, they bent a little bit defensively, but they didn't break. They held Oregon to one for 13 from the floor to close the game.